Good morning, friends. Welcome to our Tuesday Bible study. I want to share a passage with you this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, from chapter 5, uh, verses 13 through 16. Jesus said, You're the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now there's an old Chinese proverb, I'm sure you've heard it, said that uh, if you want to be happy for one hour, uh, then get drunk. If you want to be happy for three days, get married. If you want to be happy for eight days, kill your pig and eat it. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, learn how to fish. Well, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So if we're the salt of the earth and we're the light of the world, then that's important for us to realize people need us in order for there to uh, be strength, in order for there to be diversity, in order for there to be something that takes the everyday mundane droll routine of life and gives it meaning, gives it purpose, shines light on why we're here, on what we're called to do and to be, what it all means. And we have those answers. And one of the most important things for us to do in shining light is to shine the light of the joy of the Lord. One of the things that we should be do to season this this dull, depressing, uh, stressful uh, lives that so many people, especially in, in our society, tend to be leading, is to bring that joy of the Lord up to the forefront and to lift it up before them. Over and over we hear the words in the scriptures, happy are those whose God is the Lord. Happy the home when God is there. Jesus said, I am come that your joy may be full. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So let me ask you this. Are you a happy Christian today? Because if you're walking with Jesus, there should be joy in your life. And that joy should be um, seen by everybody around you. It should be evident that you're excited to be a Christian because Christians are supposed to be happy. I mean, we're filled with the joy of God. We experience the perfect peace of our Lord and Savior. We know that we never walk alone while we're in this life because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And so Christ and our Heavenly Father are always with us, dwelling within us as that Holy Spirit guides us and instructs us, inspires us, and empowers us to do our Father's will. We know that all of this stuff in this life, and this life itself, that this ain't it. And when we're done with this life, when our physical bodies can't go anymore and die, that that's not the end. It's actually for us just the beginning, the beginning of our eternal life, where we won't suffer anymore and we won't, uh, sorrow anymore, but then our joy will truly be perfected. So I want to say to you that, uh, you know, a long face and, and a sour disposition is unbecoming to a child of light and to a recipient of the grace of Jesus Christ. People who are filled with the awesome wonder and power of the Holy Spirit don't mope around and, and growl and grump all the time. We pray. We praise, we worship, we witness. And our witness is one of joy. Joy in our salvation from hell's fire. Joy in the forgiveness 
of the penalty of our sins. Even more joy in the fact that Christ has taken away the guilt of our sins so we can truly be free. Joy in the mercy that God has made us his children, his own. Joy in the love that God has poured into our lives and, and that he allows us to share and pour into the lives of people around us. We are blessed. We are blessed. And so we should look and, and talk and act and live like we're blessed. And you know, there's a lot of people in churches today that, that look like they just ate a green persimmon, you know, or uh, for those of you who are the younger generation, you know, it looked like they just ate the brother's dirty gym socks. God wants his people to bring light and love and joy into this world. And that's why he said we're the salt of the earth, because salt enhances what's otherwise dull and drab. Salt preserves, and we're supposed to preserve what's really good about this life, what's really good about uh, the, the love that God has poured into us and, and that we share with one another, what's good about the other people around us instead of just dwelling on the negative and dwelling on what's wrong. Christians should be making the world a brighter and a happier place, not walking around with this attitude of, of doom and gloom. There's plenty of that to go around. You want strength to overcome your problems? to overcome your doubts and, and your anxiety and your fears, then repeat after me, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Say that again. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you feel stronger yet? No, then say it again. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We have to mean that. We have to want that. And then we have to claim that. And then rejoice in the Lord. Just as the scripture said, rejoice in the Lord always. Not just when things are going great and rosy, but, but when times get hard and, and tough and we're walking through darkness. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Because God loves you. So celebrate that love. Jesus has redeemed us from hell. Celebrate that salvation. I read that Joseph Addison uh, once said, the grand essentials to happiness in this life are something to do, someone to love, and something to hope for. Well, as Christians, as God's people, our something to do is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and the love of God poured out to us through him by speaking and acting and doing the way Jesus has called us to speak and to act and to do, and to do it all with joy and with love. And then the second thing Addison said was having someone to love. We're commanded to love everyone just the way that God loves us and to love God more than anything and anyone else. And the last thing he said is to have something to hope for. Well, our hope is the promise that we have of eternal life through Jesus Christ and the blessed reunion that will come at that time with all of our loved ones who have gone on before us. So Christians, we need to get out there and be happy. We need to get out there and rejoice and let the world see the difference that worshiping Jesus Christ makes in our lives so they know that he can make the same difference in theirs. Rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Sola gratia, friends.